Do not think I have come to bring peace on Earth. I've come not to bring peace, but a sword. Gladman, behold the fiery cross, still brilliant. All the troubled history failed to quench its hollow flame. Let me say that the cross is an inspiration, a sign of the Christian, Christian religion, a symbol of faith, hope, and love. We do not burn but light the cross to signify that Christ is the light of the world. So this is the emblem of the Lord's Resistance Army. In the middle of the harp is the Ten Commandment of God. We are fighting to defend the Ten Commandment of God because people are not following the Ten Commandment of God. Anybody who raises a weapon up against these people who are slaughtering these babies before God and the entire world right now, I say, you are doing God's own work and more power to you. May the power of God be with you as you aim that rifle and as you lay it down just like that and you look along those sights and you squeeze that trigger. You're squeezing that trigger for Almighty God. Christian terrorism is alive. Don't think that the lack of media coverage is due to there not being anything to report, or that such terrorism does not exist. Have you ever heard of the KKK? The Army of God or the Lord's Resistance Army? How about the Easter Nightning? Although these extreme Christian terrorist organizations do exist, and are very active. The lack of media coverage makes it seem like that the only terrorists in the world are that of the Islamic variety. What if we told you that based on a review conducted by the Global Research Center for Research on Globalization, of the approximately 2,400 terrorist attacks on U.S. soil, only 60 were carried out by Muslims. In other words, only 2.5% of all terrorist attacks on U.S. soil between 1970 and 2012 were carried out by people who either claimed to be Muslims or for whom it was claimed that they were Muslims. Whether they were really Muslims is debatable. Another very interesting fact is that approximately 118 of the terror attacks, or 4.9%, were actually carried out by Jewish groups such as the Jewish Armed Resistance, the Jewish Defense League, Jewish Action Movement, United Jewish Underground, and the Thunder of Zion. This is almost twice the percentage of the so-called Islamic attacks within the United States. Now let us pause for a moment and take a look at how the U.S. Code of Federal Regulations has defined terrorism. Terrorism is the unlawful use of force and violence against persons or property to intimidate or coerce a government, the civilian population, or any segment thereof in furtherance of political or social objectives. This definition is very broad and can be applied to anything and anyone. The questions that come to one's mind, however, are Why is it only being applied to terrorists who identify themselves as Muslims? Why is terrorism viewed as an exclusively Islamic phenomenon? Did we already forget the Crusades and the Inquisition, which took millions of lives, all performed in the name of Christianity? 
Did we forget the killing of millions of Native Americans, which in many instances was done in the name of Christ and Christianity? Did we also forget slavery and Jim Crow, which were justified in the name of Christ? Ephesians chapter 6, verses 5 and 7. Slaves, Ephesians 6, 5. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart, as obeying Christ. That's my translation. As obeying Christ. You're obeying of them as obeying Christ. Not by way of eye service as a man pleaser, but as slaves of Christ doing the will of God from the heart, rendering service with a good will as to Christ, not to man. You talk about freedom. In other words, Christian slaves, your submission to your master is totally different than the submission of all other slaves. It is on a totally different footing. Your obedience to your masters is only required and only good as obedience to Christ. If it wasn't for slavery, those folks would still be in Africa with a bone in their nose, fighting lines. And if you don't like that, you can lump it any way you want. That ain't a prejudice. That is factual and historical. So here we are in the Pauline epistles. And the man's teaching us how to deal with our slaves. Let us be frank. When white Christian males carry out or plan to carry out terrorist attacks, they're usually described as lone wolf extremists and not as Christian terrorists, even though they identify themselves as Christians and at times belong to organizations such as the Crusaders in Kansas. How about the four white men who planned a bomb attack on the Muslim community on Islamburg in January of 2019? A small Muslim community in upstate New York and they could have been the target of a deadly attack. Police have arrested and charged these three men as well as a 16-year-old on possession of weapons and conspiracy charges. Police say the suspects had more than 20 firearms and three improvised explosive devices in their possession. In 2017, a Tennessee man was sent to federal prison for nearly 20 years after plotting to burn down Islamburg's mosque and school. At the time, then Attorney General Jeff Sessions described the plot as an attack on religious freedom. But if someone named Ahmed, for instance, committed a crime, by default, he will be considered a Muslim terrorist, even if he himself is ignorant of the teachings of Islam. And by the time the connection between Ahmed and radicalism is dismissed, the damage has already been done, and Ahmed has been labeled as a terrorist, and society has accepted it as such due to the media. This poses another question. Why does the media feel the need to identify the religion of a Muslim when he carries out an attack? But it does not dwell on the religion or religious affiliation of anyone else when similar attacks happen. Let us take 23-year-old Mark Anthony Condit, for example. The man responsible for the bombings in Austin in 2018, which resulted in the death of three people, including Mark Anthony Condit himself, and numerous injuries. He was part of conservative survivalist circles. An acquaintance of Condit confirmed that he was involved in a group called the Righteous Invasion of Truth, 
a riot, which was named after Carmen's song. Carmen is a contemporary Christian singer who often shows up on stage with his Bible in hand. The group is a, quote, Bible study and outdoors group for homeschooled kids, created and named by the kids and their families that included monthly activities such as archery, gun skills, and water balloon fights, end quote. Every effort possible was made to remove Condit from any connection to Christian terrorism. Austin Police Chief Brian Manley described the bomber as, quote, a very challenged young man, unquote. It turns out the person who had done the bombings in Austin uh, has left a 25 minute confession. Uh, he uh, passed away when uh, officers caught up with him, he blew himself up. Uh, that was the sixth bomb that exploded, two had been killed in the earlier bombings, five injured. Uh, so good law enforcement uh, to track him down and find out who he is. Then they found his confession and here's interim Austin Police Chief Brian Manley explaining uh, what is and what is not in the tape. He said, he does not at all mention anything about terrorism, nor does he mention anything about hate. But instead, it is the outcry of a very challenged young man talking about challenges in his personal life that led him to this point. How often do you see a Muslim terrorist being called, oh, it's just a challenged young man? What, what? I mean, he decided that he was gonna mow down nearly 50 people. He was a challenged young man. He, oh, that guy was gonna kill his coworkers. That other guy was gonna do a bomb in New York City. They were just challenged young men. Well, golly gee, what can you do? Look, I don't think the police chief means any harm in it at all. I just think that he looks at the guy and goes, there but by the grace of God goes someone I know. He looks like me and so, and he had troubles. And so, and his troubles led to this. When it's a Muslim, it's a foreigner. It doesn't look like me, it doesn't have a similar name. I'm not gonna look into whether he was challenged, challenged. No, he's a monster and we're done with it. In fact, uh, let me show you two different things here that I think uh, illustrates that really well. Our producer, Jared Jackson, found these. At first, we're gonna go to Representative Michael McCall on uh, Fox News and listen to how he describes the Austin bomber. Uh, this is, I guess, in a sense, homegrown terror. What do you think we've learned so far? Well, you and I usually talk about these cases in New York. I didn't imagine this happening in my hometown of Austin. Um, I think it's clear from his confession that this is not terror related, although it did terrorize the city of Austin for the last month. I think the nightmare is over. It's time to heal uh, in Austin. Um, I think it was a disturbed young man, uh, a very probably mentally ill type person. So let me get this right. Even though he terrorized Austin and did a series of bombings, it is not terrorism, because now we found out he's a white right winger. He's just a disturbed young man, that's all. It is almost like the police and the press want us to feel sorry for these challenged young white men who are driven to such terrible acts. It is almost like they want us to feel that it is our fault and that we failed them as a society. The fact that he grew up in a strict religious Christian family that he wrote blog posts where he clearly showed his right-wing Christian inclinations were not enough to name him as a Christian terrorist. Imagine if Mark was a Muslim. Do you think there would have been any hesitation to connect him to Islamic terrorism? The focus on radical Islamic terrorists. We must deal with frontally with this threat of radical Islamists. Yet not a word was said by presidential hopefuls about the other serious threat to America, acts of mass murder committed by far-right white gunmen. Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines terrorism as violent or destructive acts committed by an individual or a group in order to intimidate a population or a government into granting their demands. Fair enough, but if we stick by the same definition, why only acts of Islamic terrorism are considered as such in America, whilst acts of murder committed by white, far-right extremists are not? But let's look at the statistics from the New America Foundation study. Since 9-11, uh, they say that jihadi attacks claimed almost the same number of people as far-right wing attacks. In fact, the death toll of the latter has been more. But every time uh, people who associate themselves with Islam perform an attack anywhere in the world, Muslims all across America are paying the price. And the media makes the situation even worse. We have concluded that a white Christian male who commits a violent act by default is a lone wolf, mentally ill. 
or has acted in frustration because of a recent parking dispute that just took place with his neighbor. You get the point. Even though there may be an obvious connection between the white Christian male and radicalism, the media will intentionally fail to report such a link. The image of a peaceful Christianity must not be disturbed. Larry Steve McWilliams is the terrorist who went on a shooting spree last weekend in downtown Austin, Texas. And news broke today that, in fact, he's a Christian terrorist. He's part of a Christian identity movement known as the Phineas Priesthood. This is a group that I've never heard of until today. They're described as, quote, a Christian identity cult originating in the Pacific Northwest that opposes interracial relationships, homosexuality, and excessive taxation. It gets its name from the biblical figure Phineas, who executed an Israelite man who was having sexual relations with an idolatrous Midianite woman. So Raw Story explains, quote, There are no meetings, and membership only entails adopting and acting upon its beliefs, which include murdering gays, interracial couples, and abortion doctors. For example, in the 1990s, three men in Portland were arrested after robbing banks and bombing the Spokesman Review newspaper. So, the beliefs of this terrorist group are laid out in a book called Vigilantes of Christendom, which says the following, quote, It makes little difference whether you agree or disagree with the Phineas Priesthood. It is important that you know that it exists, is active, and is near, and is the near, and in the near, excuse me, future, may become a central fact in your life. The simple fact is, one who is willing to give you his life for what he believes cannot be ignored. And then they say this, this is chilling. As the kamikaze is to the Japanese, so the Phineas Priest is to Christendom. Let us be fair and look outside of Islam and see for ourselves that terrorism is not an Islamic trademark. It is not just Al-Qaeda and ISIS or Al-Shabaab that we have to worry about. Let us look at a few organizations that are not Muslim, but rather fundamentalist, extremist, Christian organizations. Organizations that are just as diabolical and just as dangerous as Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Christian terror groups are not often discussed in the media. Rather, they're almost never discussed. But they exist and are responsible for horrible acts of violence. Take, for example, the Christian militia group anti-Balaka. They're responsible for the destruction of almost all mosques or Muslim places of worship in Central African Republic. How about Brenton Terran, whose admiration for Christian terrorists such as the Serbian Chetnik movement led him to mercilessly murder 50 Muslim worshippers and injuring 50 more. He's an extremist who was influenced by individual Christian terrorists as well as Christian terrorist organizations. One has to simply read his so-called manifesto to realize that there is a strong connection to Christian terrorism. But let us get into some more prominent organizations, such as the Ku Klux Klan, or simply, the Klan. Even though many Christians hate to admit it, there is absolutely no doubt that this organization is a Christian one. And according to historian Brian R. Farmer, quote, two-thirds of the national Klan lecturers were Protestant ministers, end quote. One doesn't have to look any further for a Christian connection than the now all too familiar burning of the cross ceremony that the clan is famous for, which is usually followed by singing of Christian hymns, prayer, and other Christian the symbolism. The cross is an inspiration, a sign of the Christian, Christian religion, a symbol of faith, hope, and love. We do not burn but light the cross to signify that Christ is the light of the world. William Joseph Simmons, the founder of the second clan, and 16 other men climbed the top stone mountain in Georgia on November the 25th of 1915 and lit a large wooden cross on fire. At midnight, on that Thanksgiving night, these men pledged allegiance to the U.S. Constitution, 
American ideals and the tenets of the Christian religion. Christians in America may not like to acknowledge how influential the Klan was or how the group made a strong connection between faith and racial or ethnic purity and God and country, but the fact remains, Christianity remains a prominent part of the Klan, and that is indisputable. We don't hate people because of their race. I mean, we're, we're a Christian organization. Let us move on to the Army of God, a violent group of individuals, fueled by the love of Christ and the hatred for everyone else. They openly promote the killing of abortion providers. Their members include terrorists such as Paul Jennings Hill, John C. Salvi, and Eric Rudolph. One has to simply look up these individuals to understand that this is truly an evil organization with evil members who are ready to kill in the name of their religion, in the name of Christianity. Next, we have Eastern Lightning, also known as the Church of the Almighty God, founded in China. A Christian group with an end-time, apocalyptic focus. They believe that this world is coming to an end, and it is their duty to slay demons in preparation of the coming of Christ. So in May 2014, members of this group beat a 37-year-old woman named Wu Xiyan to death in a McDonald's in Zhayun, China. The beating took place after she refused to provide him with her phone number. Eastern Lightning members Zhang Lidong and his daughter Zhang Fan were convicted of murder. Please note, they were convicted of murder and not terrorism. In 2014, during an interview from prison, Lidong expressed no remorse and he said, quote, I beat her with all my might and stamped on her too. She was a demon. We had to destroy her. <laughs> John Lee Dong was one of the six attackers who killed the woman. He's also the father of three of the other suspects. He used to be a businessman selling medicines before he joined the Church of Almighty God. Now he's unemployed. John explained what caused them to attack the woman that night. John said they were trying to persuade the woman to join the Church of Almighty God. They asked her for her cell phone number. When she refused, they attacked her. Finally, we conclude with the feared Lord's Resistance Army. This terrorist organization was founded by Joseph Kony with the goal of establishing a Christian fundamentalist government in Uganda. The LRA is responsible for more than 100,000 deaths and since September 2008 alone, the LRA has killed more than 2,600 civilians and abducted more than 4,000 individuals, many of them children. All of these organizations and individuals get their teachings directly from the Bible. This might be a shock to the average Christian who has been only taught the nice parts of the Bible. But one has to be honest and fair. The Bible is filled with infanticide, incest, murder, deceit, betrayal, and much more. Happy is the one who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. Now kill all the boys and kill every woman who has slept with a man, but save for yourselves every girl who has never slept with a man. So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. 
About three months later, Judah was told, Tamar, your daughter-in-law, has been immoral. Moreover, she is pregnant by immorality. And Judah said, Bring her out and let her be burned. I have noted what Amalek did to Israel in opposing them on the way when they came out of Egypt. Now go and strike Amalek and devote to destruction all that they have. Do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. Now these are not verses from the Quran. Rather, these are biblical passages that terrorists throughout the centuries have used as a justification for burning people alive, murdering, kidnapping, and other atrocities. As a matter of fact, ISIS has borrowed many of their terrorist techniques from the Bible and not the Quran. One of the techniques of punishment or execution that ISIS seems to have borrowed from the Bible and not Islam is that by way of fire. In Islam it is strictly prohibited to punish a person or execute a person by way of fire. In the Bible on the other hand, it seems to be a quite acceptable punishment. We could continue to list more Christian terrorist organizations, but we will suffice with these. We will let the audience take over the research and let the internet be the tool in concluding that terrorism is not an Islamic phenomenon. Rather, modern day terrorism tactics trace their roots back to the gunpowder plot, where in simple terms a group of ambitious Christians wanted to blow King James I of England and the Palace of Westminster, the English seat of government, to pieces. And from there on, many have copied and adopted their techniques for their own purpose. So the true fathers of modern day terrorism and terrorist tactics were not Muslims, they were Christians. Terrorism has no religion, it is evil and it must be eliminated. But it will not be eliminated if only the terrorist actions of a specific group are scrutinized and others are ignored. It must be confronted and fought for what it is, an evil tool wielded in the hands of evil people regardless of religion or sectarian affiliations.